In the previous videos, we learned how to get MIDI data in from the controller and make it more useful by naming each control. We also learned how to build a graphical user interface in Max that mirrors what's happening on the control R. Finally, we learned about controlling the LEDs and how to coordinate what happens in your patch with what is illuminated on your control R. In this video, we're going to go through a fully realized step sequencer for the control R and I'll explain how this patch works so you can hack it for your own needs. This happens to play audio, but there's no reason you can't use this system for any of the other amazing things that Max can control, like video or robots. For those new to Max, this might be a bit intimidating, so let me give you an overview of some of the important concepts that I use. If you aren't familiar with Powder Storage, SprintF, or RegExp, here's a patch that shows how I use them. But you'll probably want to visit the help patches if you want to learn more. Otherwise, you'll just have to have faith. I have this B patcher named Control R. It has some UI dials and they are brought into Patter Storage's universe. When I turn a dial, I'm notified of this in Patter Storage. I can also take data from elsewhere to control the dials in the B patcher. I can then break up that message with regexp and send it to control something else. This is all I'm really doing in my step app. I have the hardware controller and my UI controller tightly linked, and I can then route information to different sound modules. Before you open the patch, make sure this max folder is in your search path. When we first open this patch, it looks for a MIDI port with Control R in the name, so you probably won't have to select anything from this menu. It should just be ready to go. We can then start the clock. We get our runner LED on the UI and on the Control R, so we know things are working. So what's the idea with this app? We have 16 sequences accessed from the 4x4 grid. Each sequence has its own sound. The encoders link to the sound for the sequence, so I can modify the sound. These top encoders are for modifying the notes of each sequence. It's kind of like writing music with four knobs. Transpose sets the root of what's playing. Range changes the spread of notes over an octave. Scale morphs between various scales that are set up in this data. You can change this however you like, to whatever scales or whatever arrangements. Jumble rearranges things from ascending to random to descending. All the control for the sequence data is here in Poly. If you're not familiar with Poly, basically what it does is take some Axe patch and makes a bunch of different copies of it, all available to your patch. This makes 16 copies of PolyStep. We use the 4x4 to change the target number so we can direct our control data to the desired sequence. You can see there's a few other things you might want to hook controls up in here, like duration, or you can add randomness for variation. What comes out of this poly object is MIDI notes, each prepended with the target number so it can be directed to the right place. That place is here, where all the synths live. I've created a few different sounds using the beep set of analog style modules for Max. This is a free set of patches from Strata. The link is in the readme of this set. However, these are all embedded in the patch. You don't need to download to make anything work. You can see the columns are all grouped to one fader. If we look inside, we can see how I've created a group of eight dials that are linked up to the control R when the voice is active. These dials are scaled and sent to the modules. You can change the mapping here, and you can also modify the unmapped dials. If you want to see all the available parameters that you could possibly map, just press this button. These parameter names can then get put into this patch here to change the map. You might have also noticed I have some send effects. I can use these top knobs to send any of the groups to the effects I control here. 
all those effects are in this patch here, also taken from the Beep library. There's a few tricks to get this all working right. When I press a button on the grid, the encoders are updated, as are the steps. The way this works is that I store all the values for these controls as I use them, so I can easily recall them later. That all happens here in this value management patch, where we retrieve the values for each sequence when we change the target. For the most part, distributing control to the different patches is pretty simple and straightforward, and it all boils down to the original patch, turning MIDI into named elements so I can easily send these controls to different parameters in my patch. But that's all great. What does it sound like? Let's play around with this. I urge you to download it and modify it to your own needs. So what does it sound like? Well, here's an example, but of course, once you get your hands dirty in this patch and with the Control-R, it's going to sound completely different from this.